Thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner here on YouTube. And don't forget to leave us a like and a comment. And you can share with a friend if you enjoy it and subscribe so you're notified of new videos. Thanks and enjoy the show. The space is ready and so are we. This week on Today's Homeowner, we wrap up part two of our outdoor kitchen project. The granite is so pretty. I love it. We picked the perfect granite. Ashley and Autumn Zellner want an outdoor kitchen. We always knew we wanted an outdoor kitchen. We've always enjoyed uh, grilling in the backyard and girls playing in the backyard. Ashley enjoys cooking, and so we always wanted him to have a space where he could do some cooking outside. Definitely needs more counter space out there. Always end up setting the grill tools and the prep stuff on the table there, and then we don't have that space to eat on. We formed and poured two slabs that more than doubled the size of their existing patio. The kitchen will be located on the left side, while the right side will be more of a lounge area for the fire pit. The concrete pour went smoothly. But the weather threatened to mess it all up. Last night we had the monsoon of the century. Oh, I'm nervous. We put down some plastic and then also some um, wood pieces for the rain that was coming off the house. Oh, yay! It survived, yay! No giant holes. Nope, no giant holes. To ensure that the new surface would blend in with the existing one, we laid a brick border around it that matched the old one. That completed the surface we needed, but we also have gotten a good start on the cabinets that will turn this patio into an outdoor kitchen. Alan and Ashley built the frames for the cabinets from pressure treated wood while we were waiting for concrete to dry. Soon we'll cover them with cement backer board and split brick to match the house. Besides providing the countertop space that Ashley wanted, the cabinets will also offer storage, a platform for the sink, and a home for the grill. Don't you think this is going to be kind of cool to be able to take that and slip it right in the cabinet right in there and have the granite cut around it? Right. No that one will know that it was once a freestanding barbecue grill. Now that the surface is ready, we can begin putting the cabinets in place. There are two cabinet sections that will be joined together to form an L shape along the wall of the house and the outside edge of the new slab. Right, if we do this right, we can get Alan stuck. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> That's, that's my mark right there that I need. Okay, all right. It's always a bit of a challenge anytime you're building something level on a patio slab because the patio slab should be a bit unlevel to allow the water to run away from the house. That's real close. And that's, okay, we got we got to go up on that end yep. down there. Do you have any more of those? Um, whoa, that is right on the money. <laughs> yep, that's on it. <laughs> Yay. Yay, perfect. Good, good job there, Autumn. Yay, perfect. I'm getting really excited. <laughs> Keep going. It's going to feel good, huh? Yes. It's not real until the cabinets are in place. It is so exciting. Everything's starting to come together. Um, I can see it now. I can see where the kitchen's going to be. I can see where the sink's going to be. It's a nail to our house. It's official. Well, to position the grill, of course, we got to make sure that it's level, right? but the slab we're, is sloping, sloping you know, way. because we want it to shed the water off of there. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to suggest is just taking a two by four, we can glue it right down to the slab and screw it in all the way around, and that'll support the cabinet mid-span. Right. Because it's probably going to be about a three eighths inch slope. We can just put some so little strips strip there, strips this. there, okay. put treated plywood down, and that'll level it out. That'll be easier and more accurate than right. us trying to do that now. Okay. All right, so we need a couple pieces yep. of two by four here. Yep. Once we build that platform for the grill, we can begin the backer board. The backer board is secured with construction adhesive and screws to help stiffen the whole structure. In the places where we installed doors, we built frames out of one by fours to give ourselves a place to mount the cabinet door hinges and cap the raw ends of the bricks around the doors. Okay, what do you think? It looks great. It's hard to imagine what it's going to look like, and now that I can see it all coming together, I can really imagine using it. Like most kitchen cabinets, these have self-closing hinges, 
that pull the door closed and hold it closed. But over time, the spring inside the hinge will break, and you'll end up with this, a door that just won't close. And that's because the spring inside the hinge is broken, but rather than replace the hinges, I'm gonna fix the problem with a roller catch. It's a simple piece of hardware, it has two parts, spring-loaded rollers that mount inside the cabinet, and a little metal clip that mounts to the door. And when it comes together, it locks it and holds the door closed tightly. The first step is to hold the roller catch inside the cabinet, flush with the face frame. Then mark the screw holes and fasten it down with two screws. Then take the latch, slip it between the rollers, close the door, reach around inside and mark the screw holes on the latch itself. Then remove the latch and screw it to the door. Just be sure to use short screws because you don't want them poking through the front of the door. And now, even though the springs on the hinges are broken, the roller catch will hold the door closed. Autumn and Ashley's outdoor kitchen is finally starting to look like a kitchen. The cabinet frames are in place and covered with backer board. Now we're ready for the bricks. Now this is where it really gets tedious and a little unusual in that we've taken all of these bricks and split the face off of them. We did that earlier while the concrete was drying and it was a great opportunity to introduce Autumn to the wet saw. Got you a dust mask here, I'll help you with that. There we go. Draw something on it. There we go. No, I didn't draw anything on it. No, there you are, that looks nice. <laughs> I had an idea that they were going to put something on that mask, that they were going to mess with me a little bit. Now that's one joke that never gets old. But I was excited about cutting the bricks, so I didn't mind too much. Okay, you feel industrial at this point? I do. Okay. I feel it's very safe. You actually pull the saw down and it stays put, and then you're just simply sliding this and just letting it cut, take your time, keep your fingers out of the way, okay. and then push it right on through. And you only Ooh. have 321 more to go. <laughs> Actually, we let Autumn off the hook while Bear did the bulk of the cutting. I am very, very thankful that I didn't have to cut all 300. Bear was awesome cutting those bricks. It was easy enough to pull a level chalk line off the first mortar joint on the house to get the first row started. But after that, we realized we would need half inch spacers to match the mortar joint. Since those aren't readily available, we're using scraps of the half-inch backer board between each row to maintain the proper spacing. <laughs> I think a man's got to know his limitations, and I know that I am not a mason. But I think it's looking good. It is looking good, and it's going a lot faster than I thought it would. The big challenge here is making sure the split brick on the outside of the cabinets line up perfectly with all the bricks on the house. Autumn, while you're there, can you eyeball it from that side and see if we're going straight? I don't know if it is straight, but it looks straight. <laughs> as long as it looks good, that's good. <laughs> By the end of day three, most of the split brick is in place. Early the next day, however, we discover a slight problem with our spacers. I'm not sure who, I, I think it was the director of our show who said, let's use some of the concrete backer board. And like a dummy, I'm going, great idea. Not so much. When you put a concrete backer board that sticks into that mastic or that thin set behind there, we're trying to take them off right now and they're stuck. Yeah, I didn't realize these would be as stuck as they are. Well, it makes me happy that it, it's this hard because we know the brick is stuck on there good too. True. So I'm trying to pull these spacers out that we shouldn't have used and bricks are popping off. So we, we lost a few bricks. Fantastic. But it, it really wasn't as bad as I thought. The ones that are there are holding well. Um, we're just going to put some more glue on the back of the ones that uh, fell off and I think once we get the mortar in place I think that it'll be fine. But before we can start that process, the stone countertops arrive and everybody's mood lightens. There it is. Wow. I love this finish. It's beautiful. The stone Autumn chose is from Brazil and it has a matte finish rather than a polished appearance. It really does fit in perfectly with the rest of this space, 
and the guys who are installing the stone are sweating all the details to make sure Ashley and Autumn aren't disappointed. The granite is so pretty. I love it. We picked the perfect granite. Stone fabrication and installation is a trade that requires a variety of skills and lots of precision, so it's important to choose someone who's qualified. These guys are MIA accredited, and they not only secure the tops to the cabinets and mix the custom color epoxy to join seams together, they have to make precise measurements and cuts in an extremely hard surface to accommodate the grill and side burner. Not to mention installing the undermount sink and drilling that faucet hole in just the right spot. Those guys are amazing. They cut the holes exactly like I want them. I'm so excited. It looks beautiful. This is probably a familiar sight in your toolbox. A good ratchet is always great to have on hand because you can loosen and tighten the bolts in no time. But what if you've got longer bolts that you need to get through? Well, Husky has the universal pass-through ratchet set. And just look at the difference. You can see me through this one as opposed to this one. This is great for getting um, uh, tightening down nuts that are on long carriage bolts. Now, I've got a socket here and a little uh, area set up just to show you how it works. What you do is look, it slips right over and is able to loosen and tighten that nut on this long bolt. Now, another thing is look how thin the profile is. That means that you can get up into tight spaces, uh, say versus a traditional socket wrench. And also, this has 72 tooth operation, so it's gonna do it a lot faster. And with only five degree turn, you can get into those tight spaces. So if you need a ratchet set and you gotta deal with longer bolts, this is a good option for you. With the addition of the stone countertop to Autumn and Ashley's outdoor kitchen, we've really turned a corner, but there's still a lot of work to be done. Inside the grill opening, I'm adding a quarter inch layer of cement backer board to create a heat shield between the grill and the cabinet frame. We also have more split bricks to apply, but we need to start adding mortar to the ones that are already up. So they call it a grout bag, very similar to a heavy duty pastry bag. Yeah, heavy duty is right. You create all of the nice cupcakes and that kind of thing. Well, not with this. You're going to fill in all of the mortar joints with this. Okay. Alan and I are going to do the rest of the brickwork that we didn't get to yesterday. And then if you guys can attack the mortar on the other side, it's going to be a little bit of a mess. Right. So I think <coughs> you, you should fun. try this because it's fun and you're adventurous. Okay. The mortar or grout is the same standard mix we used on the brick border earlier, but this time we're mixing up in smaller batches and experimenting with the consistency because we need it to flow easily out of the grout bag. If you did this every day, it'd be easy to figure this out. But... Yeah. After some trial and error, we get it right. It's like a sausage press. Not real pretty. <laughs> no, not real pretty. Autumn starts out applying the mortar, with Ashley following up to smooth out the joints using a tuck pointing trowel. So you might want to overfill the joints a good bit, so it's kind of squeezing out as I pack it in here. Okay. I, hopefully, as I continue doing this, I'll get better and we can kind of figure out exactly how much. Yeah, we can get past the learning there. curve. Yeah. He quickly discovers that a glove finger does the job more smoothly and just as quickly. But when Ashley finds another grout bag, that spirit of cooperation gives way to this couple's competitive nature. On your mark, you set, go. Grout. Now this might be a today's homeowner first, a grout race. Figured, all right, if she's gonna work this close, let's see who can do it better. Anything will be a competition with us. I am always faster and better. You gotta get quality, not just quantity. Uh, you're blocking me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I did kind of sit on top of him, um, but he was going too slow. I needed the space. <laughs> 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 Cheater, the great grout race. I'm gonna do two rows. Two, two, two rows to your one. I think I won that one. You know, we'll have to see what the, what the tape tells. I really do think I won that competition though because 
He might have been faster, but he wasn't getting enough in there, and he had to go back afterwards and fill in the cracks. So I won. I think it's obvious that I won. We'll let the audience decide who won that one. Meanwhile, you know, this is pretty meticulous stuff, but I'd rather be over here than over there. Alan and I are working at somewhat a more leisurely pace on the other side of the bar. But they're doing, they're doing, they're doing a great. Good job. Doing a great job by themselves. Yeah. We'll keep like, crouch, <laughs> crouching over here. Yeah. <laughs> As if there weren't enough going on already, somewhere in the middle of the chaos, the plumbers, Artie and Chase, show up to connect the sink and gas line for the grill. Once all the bricks are in place and grouted, we can install the cabinet doors that Alan helped Ashley build a couple of days ago. With the cabinets complete, we can turn our attention to adding gutters overhead to protect the spot from the runoff coming from the roof above. All right, there you go. Now, of course, we're sloping the gutter down just a little bit so that all of the water here goes right in to the one downspout. One downspout's plenty when you only have just this little bit of guttering, but this is a key part of it. This is a valley diverter or splash guard that when that water comes cascading down that valley, it'll divert it into the gutter so that it doesn't end up right down here. Once the downspout is connected, we're ready for the final piece, the grill. This should be the last time you have to, to put this in. Okay, let's see here. Go down. Okay. There we go. Man, I am oh. so glad we were able to, to modify yeah. this to make it built in looking like this. That fits so good, looks so good. I think so too. Perfect. I'm really happy about how the side burners came out. I wasn't sure we were gonna be able to reuse well, that. You know, a lot of people wouldn't realize that you could most of the time can disconnect that mm -hmm. from the, the grill and then that little connector that we had under there. A right. uh, quick disconnect works out pretty well. Well, it looks good. Let's get some furniture in place okay. here. Okay. I'm more about the function than the than the finish, I, I guess I would say. But yeah, it does look really great how it turned out and how it matches the house perfectly. It looks like it's always been there. Now this project was a little larger than we normally feature here on the show, and that's why we did the two different episodes, so that we could show you all the different elements that were involved in creating this beautiful outdoor space. Now if you're about to pour some concrete, whether you do it yourself or hire someone to do it, you know what's involved in the process. And I'll tell you, speaking of process, we were surprised at how easy it was to build this outdoor kitchen just using treated two by four, cement backer board, and the split brick. It took a while, but it it really turned out nice. And of course, the natural stone countertop is the perfect countertop for an outdoor kitchen like this one. And then to be able to take just a standard standalone grill and to adapt it a little bit to make it look so custom and so built in is a great economical way to develop a beautiful kitchen just like this one. I'll tell you what, Ashley and Autumn are set up for some real family fun. I think it looks fantastic. I'm really happy with the way the grill got uh, built into it and the side burner. I think it looks fantastic. I'm really excited about the brick, um, the way that it's uh, built into our house. So it looks like it's been there forever. Nobody would ever know that we added it later. Of course, I'm happy to have the extra patio space so we can actually use the kitchen without having to work into our eating area. Um, so I like the separation between the kitchen and the dining. Um, so I'm really excited to get to use it every day. I think you'll be doing a lot more cooking. Yep. Well, it makes the space easier to use is the big thing. You know, we had the grill already, but we didn't have the counter space, didn't have the sink. Having those there ready to use is just gonna make it so much easier to cook and take less time running back and forth. We can actually use the fire pits. Um, we can sit together as a family in that space. See us getting to hang out together while he cooks or while we all cook together outside. Um, kind of prepare things in the kitchen and then go out and cook and play and, and then sit down and eat together. These guys aren't just having fun together now, they had fun while we were working on it as well. This is a great example of how to do home improvement right. Ashley and Autumn wanted this outdoor kitchen for a long time, but they didn't just wait, they planned ahead to make the project easier. And when the opportunity presented itself, they worked as hard as necessary to complete it while still enjoying each other's company in the process. I think there will be a lot more evenings like this in their future. 
Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner. And don't forget to comment, like, and hit the bell icon so that we can notify you when new videos are posted. And don't go anywhere. Click around and continue the home improving fun.